God damn it. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> so um hey everybody welcome to another episode of face the truth uh, i'm talking with an artist that um, i've known for years of his work um and uh, we got some connection some history with uh, art school that we we both went to for a while and he taught at actually um the american academy of art chicago uh but this guy's art is sick it's insane and i mean literally like i think he's a little bit crazy so we're going to talk to him about that um but I, I have a lot of respect for his his uh, his drawing and painting abilities. Um, he's very creative, and he's doing something that I don't really see any other artist doing out there. I could be wrong. I'm not the brightest tool in the box, but I haven't seen this before. Uh, I've seen his work, so I think he's uh, he's doing some really cool things. So, um, anyways, without further ado, everyone, please welcome Anthony Adcock. <laughs> And I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan, Jason. I've been following your work for what I don't know, at least ten years. You know. Oh, wow, thanks, man. I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> I was, I was like Christmas shopping, you know, and I was, I was in the store, this bookstore, and I saw your, uh, your Time magazine piece, right? Yeah. And it's just chilling there. I'm like, oh man, like I gotta buy this, you know. So I pick it up, <laughs> and my wife, she's not like a huge Biden fan or whatever, so she's like, you know, put that down. I'm like, dude, no way, man. <laughs> I'm buying, you know, I'm buying this, you know. And that was just cool, man, to see that stuff out there. You know, I appreciate and that, you're, man. You're making like you make some, you make like so many paintings. It's crazy. Every time I look, you have like a new, a new piece. You know, it's ridiculous <laughs> how much stuff you make, man. Well, I mean, hey, dude, I'm just trying to uh, pay the bills, man. <laughs> 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 I could be a good thing or a bad thing. It's, it's like too many paintings, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny though. Like I, I'm really proud of the of that particular the time cover. Of, you know. Um, it just as an illustrator getting asked to paint, paint something for time. Um, but it's just, it's, it's, it's funny because it's been a weird experience because never before in my entire career have ever, has there been so much controversy about something. So like, that's, that's been weird. I mean, it's still going on the cover, I think came out the 10th or something like that of December. And um, it's, I, I keep getting hate mail on a regular basis Um you know yeah. you some of the craziest things people have written me and it's just weird because it's like dude i just was asked to paint it and you know i painted it like that's you know i don't work for time magazine like you know because they're like asking you questions and stuff like like you know they should have put someone else on there it's like that's not up to me man you know yeah. but um yeah it's weird i just found out today that um some artist is doing a really large oil painting of my Cover. I saw that. Uh, I saw you post about that. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, how do you feel about that? <laughs> you know, how does that make you feel? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, a part of me wonders if they don't know that the cover is a painting. Hmm. Um, but I mean, I don't know how you could look at it and not tell if yeah. you're an artist because you can see the brushstrokes and stuff. Especially if you're an artist, yeah. But uh, I mean, I guess people paint other people's paintings. It is weird. Yeah. It's a little strange, but yeah. Um, it, it'll cool. make it'll make me yeah. mad if he uh, sells it for like a million dollars or something. Yeah, then I might get a little mad. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. Yeah. But um, so hey man, your work is crazy awesome. I have so many questions. But um, before we get into that, how have you been doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm I'm good. I'm staying busy. So my life is just like a mix of of making art, teaching, and then also iron working. So I do construction on the side as well as teaching and, and painting. So it's oh, just wow. like, you know, this crazy mix of it all. Yeah. You know, I jump back and forth, but I'm, I'm good, man. I'm in my studio right now. So you guys can see the, yeah. the background. I got a studio in Bridgeport. Uh, so I come here almost every day to work on all kinds of stuff, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. That's a nice studio, man. It's really yeah. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. You got to come visit sometime. After yeah. This. I'd love to. I'd love oh. to. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about your stuff and, um, you know, obviously you do, 
you do uh, figurative type work, mm-hmm. you know, based off of models and whatever else. And they're just, they're amazing. And I got some questions I want to ask about that, but, yeah. um, but then you, you've got work that, you know, one of, one of the, I think a, a pet peeve uh, that I think a lot of artists have is for, okay. So for example, if I, if I paint something super photorealistic, like, or as realistic, you know, to me, it might even be painterly like the Biden cover, for example, like to me, that's not photorealistic, but everyone thinks it is to me. It's sure. pretty, it's pretty loose um, when you actually look close at it. But one of my pet peeves is when people go, Oh, that looks just like a photograph. And it's like, yeah. no, dude, it's not. I mean, I mean, and, and I, it's like, it's like a knife, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and, they don't get it though. Yeah. 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 And it's like, you know, and it, it, but, but I understand exactly where they're coming from at the same time. But I think a pet peeve of a lot of artists is, you know, trying or having to explain their themselves or explain their art on a regular basis. And I have the feeling that you have to do that quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but in their defense, what's insane about your work to me is like, there, there are, there are painters out there. For example, I was at the, uh, the, what's it called? The, gosh, the B, I think the BP portrait awards. I, I was in um, Scotland and I, I just happened to, I didn't even know it was there. I just happened to walk into this museum and they had it on display. Um, and there were some pretty amazing paintings there. And there was um, a few that were so photorealistic in oil that, I mean, I was just, I was blown away. I, I, I got right up to him and you couldn't see any, it just looked like a giant print. And I'm like, where, where's the paint on this thing? I couldn't even see a detection of a brush mark anywhere. Um, and it was unreal. And I was impressed with that, but I was also extremely bored because it's kind of like, well, I mean, that's just a lot of work. That's like a lot of work, you know, but as, for me as an artist, you know, I get more turned on when I see the real, in, in, like the brushy stuff, the, the intense, the stuff that looks pretty real. But when you walk up, it's just gopped on paint yeah. and you're just like, man, this, this is pretty sick. But um, that's a personal preference, you know. But the, the interesting thing is, so someone like that who, who can paint so photorealistic, but they're basically just painting a person based off of a photo, they're copying it. You take it to a different place where you're, you've got paintings that look like a, a, a messed up piece of plywood. And to anybody that sees it, they're just like, why is there a piece of plywood on the wall? Yeah. Well, exactly. it's, it's not, it's an oil painting. And that is awesome because you're, you're basically taking, you're, you're taking a twist to that hyperrealism thing where it's like, yeah, I'm not copying a photograph or whatever, or even like the, your sculptures of the, of the wrenches. Yeah, yeah. Like it, when I shared this work, everyone was confused. Like, why are you sharing a yeah. photo of wrenches? Well, dude, that's a sculpture. And so um, I'm just curious, I guess, like, I'm sure you, you get asked so many questions about like, why are you, why do you do that? Or yeah. I get why you do it. I think it's fucking awesome, but um, uh, explain yourself, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a long story, man. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think the absurdity of the task itself is, is part, is part of it, you know, but I'll, I'll get back yeah. to that. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, my training was in sort of figurative drawing, figurative drawing and painting. Right. So I learned this sort of representational art, how to make things look like, you know, stuff. So at the Academy, we did, yeah. you know, you know, you know, it was uh, traditional still life painting, figurative stuff. So you, you get the skill set and you're like, okay, like, what am I supposed to do with the skill set? Are you supposed to make like realistic portraits all day, whatever? And that's what, you know, everyone else wants us to do, right? Yeah. Um, with the skill set. Uh, and then I think like you, like you said, man, you see these paintings and you get, I don't want to say bored with them, but um, when you make enough of these things, you get, you get sort of bored of it. So I was, I was super fascinated in uh, like, why, like, why am I doing this? Right. Or why am I making these hyper-realistic portraits or, paintings of whatever. And I became kind of interested in conceptual art. Like you, you know, you walk around a museum and you'll see this great abstraction that's worth like some ungodly amount of money, you know? And I'm just like, back then I was just like, I don't get it. You know, <laughs> I don't get it. So it kind of drove me crazy for a minute where like, I, I, I don't know, I went back to graduate school. So I went to the University of Chicago and it was, it was the complete opposite um, training. It was all conceptual art. Yeah. And it was the first place where I experienced this where you know, I had my skill sets, I could draw and paint. And uh, I remember like my showing my work to these, these people. 
and the professors there, they, they've been doing art like so long that they're just no longer, they were just no longer impressed by representational painting. They just didn't care about how good it was at all. You know, they were like, oh, another figure painting. Oh, that's like a Rembrandt or whatever. Like, oh yeah, we've seen that, you know, like, so what? And that, and that kind of blew my mind that, mm -hmm. you know, this crowd of people where they just didn't care at all. They had no, they had, and I think, you know, the part of that is that there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad painting out there. And I think the bad, I think it sort of floods the market. So they have this like perception of anything realism. You know, it builds this negative connotation about representational painting. I think that was part of the issue. But regardless, I started, I was in this program that was hyper conceptual. And it's like, why are you doing this stuff? Why are you making these things? And I had this skill set, this like figure drawing skill set, you know? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to find a way to make conceptual art with this skill set. You yeah. know, so I started. I started toying around with, with trompeloid painting and trompeloid painting is trick of the eye painting. And that was, but it was more of a, in like a conventional sense. So uh, I would do paintings of things kind of pinned up on a wall or whatever in a very classical sort of way. But at some point I decided to see how minimal I could make this. So I started. Wait, hold, hold on a second. So yeah. are you saying like you would do paintings of something like, like a, a piece of paper with a note written on it with a tack on a wall, but you'd painting it so that you exactly. would trick people to actually think that's what it is. Exactly. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. I just want to uh, make sure I was following that. I okay. guess the issue with that is that it's still, it's still a painting. So what I mean is like, if you paint a pin and a shadow and a piece of paper, it's still, uh, it's an image, right? It's, it's flat. So when you walk mm -hmm. up to it and if you move your head to the side and look at that same painting, it, it kills the illusion, right? So it's no longer, it doesn't look three dimensional if you look at it from the side. Yeah. So, I, I think I became more interested in, in, in the process of viewing paintings themselves instead of the imagery within the painting. So I started thinking, okay, how do you make a painting that's um, as realistic from all sides, if, you know, top, bottom, side, whatever, and how do you do that? And the paintings became more and more minimal as in just hmm. paintings of surfaces. So like a painting, like a, a plywood or whatever, a piece of plywood, when you encounter the painting, um, you almost have to look at it like a sculpture because it, it looks... The surface is, you know, it's painted, but you have to look at the side to see if it's a painting, which, you know, that that's interesting to me, how, how viewers interact with that. Like they're looking at a painting, but you have to yeah. look at the side of the painting to see if it's a painting, which kind of doesn't make sense, but it's, it's you know, sort of interesting. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah so then, Funny. you know, that kind of brought me into sculpture where it was like these paintings were sculptures, sort of. Mm -hmm. And I, started, I just started to consider um, just everything about the process of viewing the painting um, like in an, in a equally important sense. So what I mean is like, uh, does it have a frame? How is it lit? What kind of wall is it on? You know? So that's why my work is really confusing in images. It's, it's really meant to be seen in person and also yeah. meant to be, I think, experienced in a collection of work, not individually. So it makes more sense when you see everything sort of together. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. Um, but okay. So that's, that was my interest in, I guess, representational art and conceptual art. But, but I think like getting to the point of like your original question was like, how did I, how did I get here? Right. Or how did I get to the plywood paintings or which? Well, I mean, I guess what I'm, it's, I'm just curious. Cause I, I'm sure that you get a lot of people asking you like, what's the point? Why? Yeah. Like you, you just painted a piece of wood and, I mean, so many people, I'm sure, are confused. Like, yeah. what? What is? Why? Well, it goes. You know, you know yeah. I, I, like I said before, I get it. I understand. Yeah. I think that there's. I think that's the genius about it is that it's like, you know, the why am I doing this? Because I can. You know? yeah. And also, yeah, like, it's it. yeah. it's 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 like, you know, it's it's an interesting thing to to try to you know. It's one thing, like like I said before, about when you when you're doing a portrait of someone and you you're, you're basically basing it off of reference, and you're just trying to paint it as you know. There's people out there that their goal is to paint it as realistic as the photo, sure. and if and if you're an artist that understands what painting from life is, you know what things to leave out, what kind of information you don't want in there that photos have, and and you know, and that's what that's a lot of what I do. Um, I have to paint a lot of people, so um, I have to use a lot of references, but I take my artistic sense and my own creativity and I, I try to do different things with it but um you know it when, when when you're doing something like 
you know, like I, I used to, you know, Chris Krasnowski's yeah. paintings, like um, I used to, you know, he was my anatomy teacher at the Academy. And um, I, I actually didn't know what he was like this insanely awesome oil painter. I had no idea. Um, and uh, I have a funny story about that. I could tell you later, but, but basically when I first saw his paintings in, in person, I was like, damn, because he was taking objects um, like, like a balloon on a wall and yeah. when you walk in it looks like a, there's a balloon on the wall and and uh it's really interesting and i and i get that it's like taking it to a different place where it, it painting is illusion anyways you mm-hmm. know and and so it's it's always fun to blow people's minds with um with that but the difference is is when someone walks into and sees a painting of yours they might just walk right by it yeah. because it just looks like a piece of wood on the wall yeah and it doesn't look like I mean, it looks exactly like, yeah, it's <laughs> like, like you know, or like a sign or whatever. You've painted signs, and it's like, okay, why is there a sign hanging there? Yeah, it begs the question. Like, you know, if you paint something, if you paint something too realistic, is it even art anymore? Or like, or do people miss it? Right. So, like, yeah, it's too real. Like, yeah, people just walk past it, right? Yeah. So, you, and you're right. If you if you were to take my paintings and put them in the street, I don't think it would even be art. It would just be well, know, people would just whatever. step on it or something. Like, oh, it's yeah. Of- <laughs> It'd be like, no, that's a painting. Don't touch it. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'd like to mimic this sort of um, like found object scene or you know, kind of ready made scene. So when you walk into the show, it's sort of uh, yeah, it looks like a bunch of junk placed around or some plywood and signs or tools. And and at first, I think you could you can cut. I've analyzed that as like a found object art show, like like a Duchamp or something, right? But then it's, but at the same time, it's a hyper realistic painting, so you can have that sort of this duality, between yeah, the conversation between hyper realism and, and also found object, you know, art. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, cool. that's it's pretty cool. I mean, it's 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 interesting. I mean, what it, what what's your response usually to someone who is like, why 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 man? I don't, I don't understand, you know, yeah. because I'm sure you, you, you're, you're constantly, you yeah, know, I usually, I usually, start to explain. With, uh, I usually start with value. It's like value as in, as in like my relationship to value. So like painting, oil painting is inherently valuable or perceived to be valuable. Right. So you think people could think like you do an oil painting compared to a drawing. And for yeah. whatever reason, there's a higher perceived value on that oil painting than there's the drawing, even though you spent the same amount of time on those two pieces. So, and you know, that's because oil painting has this history, this luggage that it carries around. Right. So, mm-hmm. but so like you have, so if you do an oil painting, it's like this valuable thing. Right. So, but people over the course of history, they've been taking like a, like a shitty canvas and taking the mud, you know, colored mud essentially and making a valuable thing. Right. So now this, this is this beautiful thing over here. Yeah. Uh, but I'm trying to do sort of the opposite. Right. So it's like this reverse <laughs> alchemy in a sense right instead of taking the lead and making gold and kind of taking the gold and making lead um it you know and and i think the absurdity of it is that it takes a long time right so it takes a very long time to make this thing look like a a a piece of plywood and i think yeah so that generates the questions you know why you know why do this um but i think a lot of good art is why do this you know and why do this is that i haven't i don't you know i don't see people doing this i like i like doing yeah Yeah. No, I think it's awesome. Yeah. I, I was just bringing it up because I'm sure that's something that you have to deal with all the time. Like, yeah. like <laughs> uh, yeah. how long does it take to do something like that? I mean, you know, I would imagine it, forever. Like the, the, the larger pieces, um, like the, I'll do like four foot by four foot paintings and that'll take about six months. Uh, but the smaller, the smaller ones, like um, two or three months, but I'll, I'll generally work on a few things at the same time so i'll work on five or six paintings and at once, when you when you're working on these um i mean i, I wonder what like what's your process are, are they are these on actual board Is yeah that, so here i got oh. some stuff right here um so i'm painting on copper recently so if you can see yeah. the, the copper sheet and what i'll do is i'll um the back side is aluminum and the front side's copper and what it is, okay. it's connected. If you look very carefully, you can see that black strip. Um, yeah. It's connected with a polyethylene black core. So it's essentially a, a hard plastic that doesn't warp with humidity or temperature changes. So it's ideal to paint on because it doesn't warp. Yeah. And that's what, you know, people have issues with canvas and, and wood and stuff. So I'll, I'll build these. Um, I'll make this. And this is how the, most of them, all the paintings start like okay. this. From there, it depends on what I'm painting. So I handle each surface completely differently. So 
Um, for example, like if I'm painting a wood painting, I'll paint directly on the copper, but every, so not only am I worried about, you know, value, color, chroma and all that, but I'm also worried about texture and surface gloss. So I'm, I'm literally mimicking the, the grain with the thickness of the brushstroke. So I'll paint every brushstroke vertically or in the direction of the wood grain itself. I see. And I'll, okay. I'll make my own paint to where it, it mimics the level of surface gloss of the surface that I'm mimicking. So if it's, you know, if it's huh, wood, it's that's awesome. All, you know, but sometimes near the wood knots, it's highly reflective, uh, you know, relative to the steel paintings where it's extremely shiny and I'll, I'll polish it for like days. I polish it just yeah. to make it super glossy, you know? That's so awesome, man. Yeah. I definitely got to see some of these in person, man. That's yeah. Yeah. Um, and so when you're working on a painting like that, do you, I mean, obviously with oils, there's so many different techniques that you can do, but I don't really see an underpainting making much sense with this. Do you just kind of directly start build, building it up? Yeah. It's like a sections again, or. Yeah. It depends if there's um, like, let's say, yeah. Like the concrete paintings or the steel paintings, I'm just building it up. So I'm just starting just direct painting right on it. Um, if it's complicated, I'll draw it out and I generally draw it out with silver. So I don't know if you've ever done silver point, uh, but it's, it's like drawing with a piece of, um, it's actually just silver wire. You can see it. Oh yeah. 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 Silver pencil. Yeah. Yeah. So these are nice or gold. You can use gold as well and I'll draw it out kind of carefully. Um, wow. That's interesting. And then, yeah. And then so it's not, is it, it's not really scratching it or is it kind of, I mean, no, it'll, uh, Drawing with it, I have to prime it. So that's the issue with that is that it won't, it's not going to show up on the copper, but if I prime okay. the copper, uh, with an oil primer, it'll, um, it'll pick up on it. It, oh, works, okay. it works like a five age pencil or something. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, you can't really that's erase it, but it looks, it looks really nice. So this must have been a, quite a um, trial by, you know, air type of a thing for you. Yeah. I mean, it's not like this is anything that you learned somewhere how to do this, you know? And I'm still, I'm still learning, man. A lot of experimenting. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm still, still going, you know? Yeah. That's so nuts, man. And how, and like, and then, you know, like I can see that piece back there with the wrenches. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's crazy, man. Like yeah. my wife was like, why did you share this picture of this? Yeah. And I was like, no, that's what's, one of his paintings that's like that's a sculpture and a painting she, she's yeah. Like, no so yeah at the last show i had i let i let uh, i had them all out on the table and i let viewers pick them up because i think when you when you pick it up and you feel that it's made out of plaster it's super lightweight you know and that's and that's the weirdness to it is it's a wrench and it's you know yay big and you pick it up um but the funny thing is a lot of them broke so the oh. viewers would pick this up and just, you know, cry, would break, you know, oh, and God. It would freak out. but it was cool. And they would, they would just put it back down or whatever. And I, I thought it was, <laughs> it was cool. I'd be so pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah I, I almost like them better broken. Uh, That's interesting. Yeah. And so what are you using for those? I mean, like, like I'm thinking, I mean, so th this is maybe a weird question to ask, but I mean, like, you know, I'm I typically mostly paint people or scenery and things like that. And I'm, I usually uh, like when I paint traditionally, I really like limited palettes. It's mostly what I prefer. Yeah. And um, yeah, so do I. Um, and you know, so there's certain kinds of colors or different things that I can't actually get with a l certain limited palettes, but I don't really care because yeah. I'm more focused about value and temperature and things like that. Yep. But like when you're doing something like painting an object that's made out of metal what kind of palettes are you using for this you know to it's, get that it's, result it's the same thing it's same thing as what you're talking about it's it's relative value or relative gloss mm. so the colors may not mimic the actual object really at all but but that relative you know uh, high gloss to to rust gloss you know very low gloss um mm. makes it seem like metal so i, I do the same thing i, I do probably 99 percent of the painting with a very limited palette and then if there's something that's kind of special, I'll add, um, you know, some weird color, or whatever, but mm, okay. yeah, everything's, it's, it's so much, I don't know. I, there's so much more control, I think with limited palette. Yeah. That's interesting, man. But I think there's, there's surface gloss things that, that make it like the, like, for example, um, I'll take a, like I'll, I'll use like a 1500 grit sandpaper and sand it perfectly smooth in between layers of paint. You know, so I'll paint something and then sand it and paint something and sand it. And then I'll, I'll take a, like a fiber 
cloth and just and just polish it forever until it's super shiny you know and then i'll mix yeah. up a new a new paint that is um heavy on the pigment side so it's very it's very matte and then when i and then i'll use that for the rust and you know that that huge difference in in gloss just look makes it look like metal so it's the same thing as anything else and you know same thing as a figurative painting where it's all about relative yeah color. well i mean it's just interesting because i mean for me like i know it's 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 funny because um you know like before like from my perspective before i when i when I, I, I taught myself how to paint and i i remember you know, when I, the, the first stages of me trying to figure out and learn how to paint was all about, um, you know, I wanted so badly to make it as realistic as possible because I, I, I was doing at the time mostly caricature and I thought it was so cool to, to paint a caricature, but paint it as realistic as possible because it would trip people out. Now, tons of people do that kind of stuff, but like um, I wanted to take it to a level where it just weirded people out, you know, um, and so. But at first it was like, I didn't really quite understand that a painting isn't filling in a coloring book. It's not like, yeah. you know, it, you know, and so there's like a lot of different things I had to figure out on my own where I'm like, oh man, okay. You know, it's, it, it's almost like, um, like when I did, when I finally figured out, I know this to you, you understand this, but like values, that was like the most important thing for me. Once I've figured out and understood values, it was like, oh my gosh, I can paint anything. Yep. Like that's like basically if there's if there's any if there's any magic um, to painting, I would say that that's probably one of the most important things. Yeah, absolutely, it, it is. Yeah. yeah, and then I started realizing that like while I started you know painting, once I understood that is I I can paint anything and I can almost use any colors I want. Yeah. And the viewer is going to think that looks like a, a metal button on a jacket when really that's like a few colors that took a few seconds and it's just, yeah. but when you get up close and look at it, it doesn't look like that anymore. When you, yeah. when you, when you look at it separated, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's really interesting because painting kind of starts to become um, basically a, in a way like a puzzle that we put together. Like if, I mean, I, I don't know, that's one way that I look at it. Like, it just feels like, um, if you look at, like, you can take, if you go, go up to a painting, you can just look at every little, like little teeny sections and it just looks like chaos. Yep. Right. But it's awesome. And then when you step back, it's just, you know, like when you look at a Sergeant, um, painting, for example, sure. They'll just be like a few brush strokes and then you step back and there's a hand. It's yeah. like, God yeah. damn it. Um, that's what I think that's, what's amazing about that kind of stuff. But, um, but then, you know, the more I paint, the more um, I realize or I feel, um, I guess, a freedom to like, I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. It's almost like um, I don't have to, like, for example, like the, back to that, that, the time piece I just did. Um, if you look closely at the, at the eye, like everyone's like, oh, this is so photorealistic. But I shared images online to show people when you see the eye up close, it yeah. looks so loose. Yeah. And it's yeah. not very realistic yeah, experience. Like to me, I, I look at it and I'm like, Oh yeah. Jason's like, he's this one's loose, you know, and I'm able to see that like all these things. But I think to the commoner, to cut the common viewer, they'll never, unless yeah. you, unless you have that trained eye, I don't think you're able to see that, you know? Yeah. Perhaps. I was actually I really excited about it because of how loose it was. I was like, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess the issue too is it's printed at a, you know, a small size. Yeah. It pulls yeah, together. You know? Yeah. I mean, so check this out. So when I did the Pope cover, like in 2013, um, I, I painted that pretty loose. I mean, it's not really super tight, but because it, it prints that size, everyone's like, I, it, it, that one makes me laugh when people thought, oh, I thought it was a photograph. It's like, dude, that yeah. one's very obviously not a photograph, but, but then Every year since then, they asked me every year to paint person of the year cover, and um, uh, which is awesome. I, I I love it, but they don't they don't always get chosen because they don't know who it's going to be, and they also hire several artists to paint the same people. So someone else that might have painted the same person, you might get chosen. So, um, so I've been doing them every year um, since then, thankfully. But a few years back, Angela Merkel got chosen, and. I got, I was so frustrated because 
Um, so I, 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 they asked me to paint Angela and I did. And they, they told me that they wanted a very hyper-realistic painting of her. Yeah, yeah. They gave me these references of her that were not that great. Oh, I yeah. went to a thrift store and I bought a woman's uh, red uh, business coat uh, yeah. because that's kind of what she wears. And so I, I got pictures of myself posed. So I, and, um, you know, and I got, I, I created my own lighting and I created a painting of her that was more realistic than any photo references that they sent me. And they were really blown away by it and really excited. And I was like, Oh dude, man, if they chose, if they choose Angela, this is going to be so amazing to have this on the cover. Um, I was really excited about it. Well, the next morning, they did choose Angela, but they went with this other artist. Um, I can't think of his name right now, but he's a well-known Irish uh, oil painter. And um, he, he's super, like, I wouldn't say sloppy. I mean, that's not the right word. Probably would be insulted by that. Um, very, very, very explosive type, thick, yeah, yeah. chunky brushwork. Um, it almost looks like a bunch of paint was put down and then just took a brush and just like, yeah, yeah. all up and and so it's it's very expressive and it's very loose and i remember thinking when they chose it i was like you, you right away as an artist you start feeling super insecure or you start feeling like um i mean i know they i did what they asked me to do but they but they ended up choosing this one it's like i could have done a, a loose painterly thing yeah, yeah. Yeah. um and you, you know you, you just that never that never ends as an artist you're always gonna feel like man yeah, I know. I could have done it differently or better or whatever. So ever since that experience, I have been a little bit haunted because I I I, I have this this um, insecurity of people being confused when they see my work, especially since most of my publication work I paint digitally, sure. and and I and it's real easy to get super hyper realistic when you're painting digitally, but I purposely try not to uh, abuse the computer I, I try to make sure that i i do underpaintings and i build things up and i yeah. i don't i don't like to i don't like the manipulation crap that it that a lot of people yeah, do sure. and um so for me it's still very much a painting but with this biden cover i was like so ever since that the angela one i'm like i am going to make sure that people know it's a painting like i'm going yeah. to so like if, if that's why like for me and you look at the Biden one of the things I'm so excited about is when you do see it up close, the the eye is literally it looks like just a handful of brushwork, brush strokes. But when you see the whole image, it looks pretty real. And I'm like, that's exactly what. Yeah. Like, yes. But then it's still people are still like, yeah, looks, that was a painting, and I'm like, no. Yeah, yeah. But then yeah. then then I'm worried that if I do it too realistic, Time Magazine is going to use some someone else they hired. Yeah, you can't win, man. So. Yeah. Oh, it's, I mean, I guess that's um, oh, that was awesome. It was great. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Um, but but I, I, like that, um, I like what you're doing, though, you know, with digital art, because I think you're right. There's so much there's so much of the, uh, I guess, hyper realistic stuff and then photo manipulation where people can just uh, it's kind of they instantly go to, oh, he took a photo and just kind of moved it around in Photoshop. And that's what they're thinking, you know? Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, no, that's why I, I feel it's really important to share steps um, because Oh yeah. It's, it's part, partly, I'm just like, Hey, I want you to see this. Um, and I actually invented, I mean, I don't know if I invented, but for me, I did a completely new, uh, technique, a digital painting technique for that painting that I've never done before. And, um, I'm going to continue to do it. And it was actually a difficult, like it was, it felt like I was doing a traditional painting. Yeah. Um, I actually had my settings changed to a certain way where my brush strokes were lagging and different things and it was huh. there was like a real struggle in the work where it but it that that struggle added to the the texture the depth and everything yeah um like while i was painting and i was like oh dude I, i'm figuring something out cool here you know yeah. it felt i felt like it felt awesome i mean that's what it's supposed to be like right you know i'm like i'm sure when you're working on like <laughs> like again like we people probably get confused like hey it looks like a piece of uh cardboard or whatever but when you're working on it i'm sure you're super excited because you're like dude i'm doing it i'm like yeah. i'm really pulling this off you know the way this illusion basically yeah yeah and you know back to i like, every painting is different but the way i go about making a painting is, is different so i think what you're talking about where you're 
saying that you sort of mess around with the the settings to have lag and you know you sort of yeah. find, you you think after after making like paintings for so long I'd have every painting oh, okay this is how I'm gonna do it but yeah yeah I sort of like to, I set up that challenge or I have to do something new a new technique or a new thing or I'll come up with something and yeah it's this struggle it's like this endless struggle where you're excited about it during the process of making this thing yeah and then by the time you finish it you're just kind of like ah oh, well it's all right you know it's pretty good or, or whatever and <laughs> next you know next and it's just endless you know so like that, that's interesting though too because it's it's uh like it calls attention to the, like maybe perhaps the the process of, of making the painting itself right is more important than the actual artifact yeah right? so the, the making it all right or experiencing the painting perhaps is more important than the actual painting so i mean i don't know how about how about you I and mean, do you still have like old paintings that you hang up on the wall or something or or uh, like when you finish a painting, are you always like, like, yeah, like it looks exactly how I thought it would look or? There's very few paintings where I'm, yeah. you know, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't really have very many of my original paintings. I've, yeah. I've done, most of them have been commissions or um, I've sold. I have, I've got a few of my, the, the main paintings I have are like ones I don't want to ever get rid of, but yeah, but um, but there's there's some that I look at and I'm like, that's exactly what I wanted. Um, but it's it's really it, it's rare, I think, especially because a lot of what I'm doing is illustration. So um, I'm already doing something for someone else, and I'm trying to kind of fulfill their vision, um, and yeah. do it to the best quality. You know, make sure that you know I want to be happy with it as well. But um, I'm not as attached. And until some things, um, like for example, you're you, one one thing that's interesting. You asked like, that one artist that's doing a painting of my painting. Um, when a when, when you do a painting like that, where it's it goes viral, basically everyone sees it. I mean, I started seeing memes of that painting instantly, like people like like doing you know, people angry with it or people excited about it. Yeah. Like there was lots of things going around. And I kind of feel like when a painting, when you're in the illustration world or if you do advertising or something, like if, if you don't, if you do something that's for advertisement, like a, a poster for a TV show or whatever, it's a really cool experience. And as an artist, you're kind of like, I'm so happy that I got to be a part of it, you know? And uh, again, for me, I'm like, I got like, my lights are going to be on for this next month. So that's awesome. So, but it's kind of like, like um you're it's like your baby's grown up and moved out like they're on their own it's it's like it's not really mine anymore yeah it, it feels that way to me it feels kind of like it's a little bit removed from um it's different it's different i guess if i was doing if i was doing my own like oil painting and and then i you know i had it in a gallery and and then it shows up i see it years later like multi over like someone's like yeah, making yeah. prints of it or something that, that would be a little bit different yeah. or like if someone altered my painting and painted on top of i mean you know what i mean like yeah. It, it, yeah. i think in a way in in illustration i feel like once i once i'm finished and i hit send it, you know that version of it is going to be seen by whoever i still own the rights to that painting i can do what i want as far as you know you, i can yeah, alter yeah. it or whatever i don't know it's weird i i don't know if that even makes any sense but um i it don't know pretty, it's pretty cool too you know it's it's getting out there yeah it's it's cool i mean i i again like seriously i, I it's it's all it's always amazing when you get a really cool job um i've i've been lucky enough to do a bunch like that but to me it's just like awesome okay now give me more work <laughs> like get like all right let's get busy let's do let's do more yeah. like yeah. you know um you like that one there's plenty more let's do more yeah, yeah. like um but um i don't get too caught up with the you know i'm more about like hey i'm i'm making a living as an artist let's keep it that way <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. yeah um that's really that's really the main deal. Um, like, like when I first started, like, wh like what, how did you, okay. So like when I first, when I first started getting into this kind of, and just even when I went to the Academy, my whole goal when I went to art school was um, what, what can I 
take away from this school mm -hmm. so that I can be a better artist and I can basically achieve my goals. Um, and that was basically it. Like what? Okay. And like, there was a lot of things I'm like, all right, this is pointless. I don't need any of this. Yeah. I remember being frustrated why I had to take certain classes. I'm like, this is bullshit. I could teach this class with my eyes closed. Yeah, you probably could have. Yeah. And and I'm like, where's the goods? And in what you know what I mean? And then, you know, eventually, and and nothing against art schools or whatever. I mean, people get their own their whatever. But um, I personally got to a certain point where I was there for two years, and I was like, all right, I've seen enough. I gotta I gotta start working. Yeah. yeah. Um, Time to make money. Yeah, time. Well, I mean, I had a, I was, had a, I was married and had a, a baby, and I was working full time as an illustrator while going to art school. So it was kind of like, yeah, what am I, what yeah. am I doing here? Yeah. But like when you, when you first started going to school, what was your, like, do you, has your vision changed from like? Yes, your, yes, and no. I think you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do, you know, okay. and so all I knew was that I liked making stuff. You know, and that's all I knew, really. So, <laughs> yeah, that's it, you know. Yeah. So I went there and I'm like, you know, I don't even know what I'm going to study. And uh, I never really had any experience with painting before I went there. So I just knew how to draw. And uh, like back to what you said about value, that's the most important thing. You know, I could draw well. And, you know, I was, I was doing these classes and uh, I, I took just, I just like decided to go into oil painting, you know. But after graduation, you know, I still didn't really know what I was going to do. And I did all sorts of jobs, man. For like two years, I was doing um, like graphic design, photography, videography, uh, the illustration, uh, all sorts of things, murals and, and so on. And then I kind of got hooked up with some galleries, you know, and that, that changed my perception on, on uh, like what I wanted to do or be as an artist, I think. And, you know, I think, it, I think it was the commission work that really put a bad taste in my mouth where people would give me just like the worst idea ever yeah and, uh, and then you have to like weigh this option like do i want to draw this thing for this person who like for money and then like and then uh, can i even post it online because it's so bad you know like, <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean so oh yes so, like, like like why am i doing this one like yeah man. so i think that whole thing was so frustrating plus i also just loved oil paint and it was um like it's the it's this it's the worst medium for illustration man it's so slow you know it's just so slow and time consuming so um Dude, yeah, got, there's got, so many artists out there that do it though. That's true. You know, yeah, for yeah. illustration, it's crazy. Yeah. But you have to you have to much respect in a, in, a, in a certain way. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to like like what we talked about with being brushy or, or quick. Yeah. Uh, I I'm not sure if my method would my methods would work. I'm I mean, super I mean, slow when I, when I'm working in oils. Yeah. yeah. Like I take my time. Yeah, but you know, I got um, into some galleries and I think that was that was pretty cool and I was selling work and that was, it was a, you know, exciting feeling and stuff. And I kind of slowly dropped all the illustration projects or, or photography projects and just stuck to uh, painting. And yeah. then I, wanted to, I simply wanted to make what I wanted to make. And kind mm -hmm. of my attitude was like, if you don't like what I make, then I don't care, you know? Yeah. Um, that's, yeah. I mean, I think that's like, it's interesting because like, that's, that's kind of what happened to me when I was at art, at art school is I went, I went to New York for a weekend met a bunch of art directors and um, and got I got some work when I was there, which was really cool. And a lot of people that I respected in New York were tell, asking me like, why are you going to school? You should just be working. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I was, it was, it was, I felt really conflicted because I'm like, well, I, I got to go to school. You know, I got to, if I want to be taken as a serious artist, I have to have a degree, you know, yeah. it's like, I don't know what, why I thought that, but um basically I made a decision. I was just about to switch my major because I was an illustration major, but I did no illustration classes. I yeah. all I had done at the time was fundamentals and, uh, uh, and, yeah. and uh, like, or something. like, I think I, I did um, like a, an oil class from life, a watercolor class or two. Mm -hmm. I was just basically, I would hadn't done any of the illustration classes yet. And I was going to switch to fine art because mm -hmm. I'm like, they get, they're just drawing and painting every day. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Yeah. I don't want to like do stupid perspective drawings or yeah, yeah. now we're going to draw with markers. Fuck that. Like, I don't want to do that. You yeah. know, like I, I was so I was kind of like already like going to completely switch that. And then I went after my trip to New York. I was just like, I, I think I'm done. Yeah, no, that was smart for you. Yeah, for it works. Yeah. It's this works for me. But, you know, it's yeah. funny. I was going to tell you. So when you're talking about the the, the conceptual stuff. 
um, my wife, uh, she has a, a, a bachelor's of fine arts and, um, and I went to her graduating or yeah, I guess it was the show, her school's graduation school. Um, was it Northwestern or Northeast? I can't remember which school that is. It's on like Foster. Um, do you know what the school that is? I think it's Northeastern. Or yeah. Whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Um, anyways, it was really funny because it was hard for me to not just die laughing the entire time I was there. We, we get in there and um, everything is con- conceptual. And we were, she goes, this is my uh, drawing class. And so walking with her and we walk inside the classroom. It says drawing 101 or whatever it is. Um, drawing fundamentals. Go into this class. There's not one drawing in the entire class. There's a pile of sand on the ground uh-huh. with a little piece of paper that explains the the deep, you know, thought process behind what the sand on the ground means. Um, there was like, um, just it was just weird things thrown on the wall, and there was no drawing, but this was the drawing class. Yeah, you know? and um, there was one room that did actually have drawings and paintings and they were absolutely the worst drawings of paintings I've ever seen uh, all from graduating seniors. And it was just, it was interesting how like all these people were graduating with art degrees, but none of them were I, I was like, where's the, where's the art man. And here's yeah. the thing. I'm not, I'm not one of those guys that's like, Oh, conceptual stuff's not art. No, dude, there is some incredible conceptual art. Yeah. Like, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm a huge fan of that if it's good <laughs> yeah, well, exactly yeah. Yeah. you know yeah, there's, um, also, there's also bad conceptual art you know if the oh, idea yeah. is bad yeah it's like representational painting if there's you know if there's a bad drawing it's a bad drawing you know yeah it's just it's funny like, man yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i remember uh i remember getting my uh my uh one teacher in in art school she was she gets so pissed at, because in the art history class they would like you know ask the question like what is art you know um or they would show paintings from you know i don't know 500 years ago or or whatever i can't remember which painting i'm thinking of right now i'm blanking on the artist but anyways was was it matisse i'm not sure if it was matisse someone anyways i remember like just like this total uproar because i was like yeah that's art but it's just a terrible painting it's a really terrible painting yeah, yeah. Like, how, you know, who, no, it's subjective. It's yeah. subject. It's subjective. I mean, to some people, this is a great painting. Well, those people are idiots. Um, <laughs> this is a terrible painting. Yeah, yeah. If this painting, and I was like, for example, if someone in this school did this painting, mm-hmm. that painting would not ever hang yeah. in the hallways of this school. That's how bad it is. Um, this person was trying their hardest. It's a model that was in front of them, and they were tr- they weren't trying. They weren't being artsy fartsy. And, and, you know, I'm trying to uh, be conceptual or I'm trying there, you know, look at, look at the deep meaning behind this crappy drawing. They were trying to do an amazing likeness of that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they failed miserably. It's a terrible painting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. But, but you're saying it's amazing just because it's old and in history books. Well, because of, Yeah. Because other people said it was amazing. Right. Or there's some yeah. writing around it or some critics yeah. said it was good somewhere. Um, some of some it, Van Gogh paintings suck, mm-hmm. you know, they just do. Yeah, and I think some are awesome. Yeah, and I think like you know, there's I think a misconception when viewing art, like people, they'll see some abstract painting or whatever, and and they're like, oh, I don't get it. You know, I think, I think maybe people instead of instead of trying to figure out, okay, what it what what am I missing, or right, what information am I missing? Instead of that, try to view this painting by simply like like you. I think you project your life experiences onto this thing, right, yeah. and then you can analyze that for yourself. And I think that's where it becomes subjective, where you could, people can love this painting or hate this painting. But like what I always like told students is don't, don't read the information tag first and tell you how to yeah. think about this thing, you know, don't, and judge it, you know, first based on your own, but you may hate a painting and then come back in 20 years and then see the same thing and be like, oh, that's awesome. You know, for some reason, yeah. Yeah. events in your life that changed your way of thinking or something, you know. Um, I remember hating conceptual art for a long time, hating stuff and then being more, more and more exposed to some things. And like, I remember I had a really simple thought one time, like, 
there was this really bad drawing by Cy Twombly, you know, Cy Twombly. He's like, he looks like he, um, he's famous. It looks like a kid, a kid was scribbling, you know? And a lot of people okay. would just be like, oh, I, I hate like it's garbage. That's like the epitome of, you know, people look at this thing, oh, it's terrible, whatever. But, you know, I saw one of them in person and dude, this thing was like 40 feet long by 30 feet high, you know? And I had this thought like, wait, wait a minute. How did he, how did he make this thing? You know, how do you, how do you make a canvas like that? And what kind of studio do you have to have that make a canvas like this? You know, and then those brushes <laughs> that look like a, a scribble, they're huge, like massive, you know? So like, do you make, how do you do that? You know, how do you, you make like a, a stick with like perfect, because it looks like quick little scribbles, you know? When yeah, you but scribble, it's massive. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, thinking about, and then, and then you can sort of realize why it's in a museum or why it's important or why this artist was important. But yeah, I think um, like when you first encounter stuff like that, it's kind of, you know, the first thought is like, oh, I don't get it, you know, like, but if there's nothing to get. What, what, you yeah. know, that's, that's the interesting thing. There's nothing. Have you, have yeah. you ever seen this piece um, in the Milwaukee? It's not there anymore, I don't think, but there was this piece there that I just loved. It was very conceptual at, at the Milwaukee Art Museum where you, from a distance, you're looking at this giant wall and it just looks like soft clouds. Hmm. And uh, have you seen that piece? No, I don't think so, no. It's, it was like this giant, it was cotton or something. huge, it, well, it looks like soft. Like, you're like, what the heck? What, what is that? Yeah. And as you're getting closer and closer, you still, it's still, it almost, you get right up to it. it almost looks like you could put your hand through it and you get right up to it it's just millions of straws like no, you're just awesome. looking at straws and they're all coming out at different yeah, distances awesome. yeah and it was incredible it was yeah. like you know that's the kind of stuff that just yeah, great blows my mind yeah. i remember um i think it's hilarious too the when you like at the art institute one time i was standing behind this woman and she's works there and she's doing a tour and she's talking about monet and um she's there's a whole group there and they're all like uh-huh yeah and she's like you know on this particular day what monet was thinking while he was painting this painting is he was you know she's like going on and on it's like you don't know what he was thinking what are you talking about like yeah. and it was so ridiculous like you know talking about like what was going on in his life and what how he was feeling and that it's like you have no idea what he was thinking or feeling and i just i just love that yeah. that that's like a part of recorded history but it's completely made up history yeah. um but people just eat it up yeah, gobble it up yeah they love it yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's like i i wanted to jump in and go you want to know what he was probably not thinking that actually he was probably thinking look at how cool it is how the light is hitting the side of that building yeah. and how the, the the shadows when you squint your eyes they look violet in color that's yeah. probably what he was thinking yeah. Like I want to capture that. He wasn't yeah, he thinking about just experimenting with a like, new palette. He was like, "I'm going to keep this basic palette. I got this new color. I'm going to try it." Exactly. Out. I have yeah. some leftover paint from the last painting. Let's see, see how that works. That's from... <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It just cracks me up, man. But you know, it is what it is. Well, it's common, and you know, you get like I'll, I'll hear I'll see the same thing with historical paintings, right? So you'll see um, in some Renaissance paintings, you'll see the classic blue drapery or red drapery and, and these historians will go on and on about it means this and that or whatever and it's like no man it, it didn't like back then uh the vermilion which is mercury sulfide was like was like the the most expensive and like coolest color you could possibly own you know it was really expensive so the the church or the king or whoever would buy this and the artist was showing it off you know they, they were showing off they had this color or uh, yeah that's so uh, cool yeah exactly same thing with the blue you know so uh, you know it's like I don't know. You hear, like you said, man, you see, you hear all this stuff from the historians and, 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 you know, maybe some of it's true, but I don't, I don't know. A lot of it's speculation. It's hilarious. Um, yeah. It really is. I mean, I, it just, it always cracks me up. You know, it's like, you know, for example, like back to like, you know, the art, art history classes, there's um, I remember in art history looking at cave paintings and, going on and on and on about these cave paintings as if they're masterpieces. And it's like, listen, these, this is just really old shit. And that's why it's in the history book. We're, yeah, like, yeah. is it art? Sure. You know, but I could, I could take a shit and smear it on something. And, and yeah. I, and I could, you know, someone pissed in a jar and put a, a cross in it and, and that's art, you know? So, yeah. I mean, there's different concepts and, and that that's way deeper than a cave painting, but the, the, the difference is, is then you, I don't know if you've seen this documentary, but there's, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a documentary about these cave paintings in France that were like 35,000 years. Yeah, those Herzogs. 
thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. And they're unbelievable mm-hmm. how uh, uh, the, the anatomy of uh, the movement of the animals. I mean, they're just gorgeous and they're just, it's, it's unreal. Like yeah, that, yeah. And it's like, I, I wish I would have known of those back when I was in that art. Because yeah, 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 sure, I would have been like, sure. that guy from whoever did those from 35,000 years ago, he was an artist. Mm-hmm. That was, yeah. he, he, re, he went into a dark cave with, had to have a, a, a torch yeah, a so he could see yeah. and had to remember from, you know, from his memory, had to yeah. un- understand the anatomy, how it worked, capture the movement of those animals. And they almost looked like designs for some kind of a Pixar movie. They were so well designed. I mean, they yeah. just um, blew my mind. And, but then you want to look at literally handprints on a wall and then have an hour discussion about what that means they were just handprints on a wall they were telling stories and it's beautiful and it's it's historic and we should talk about it but you know it doesn't have like relevance to um like there wasn't like i guarantee you that guy wasn't being wasn't trying to think like about you know these deep things that they're talking about now about his drawings he was just fucking he's like dude i saw this this deer in the woods it was yeah it doesn't what it looked like bro yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look like this yeah yeah you see that <laughs> check it out yeah and they're like oh garfield come over here check out what the... and That's then you know what i mean yeah. just, it was a way to communicate it's all it was yeah. it wasn't it wasn't like they were like trying to like um tell some kind of deep story or like artistic you know what i mean like an artistic voice it was more like yeah we like, saw some we saw some deer in the field oh, we yeah. shot them yeah yeah, yeah. um you know <laughs> I just, I just love that stuff. But, but like I said, that, you know, some, some of those K paintings um, are just unreal though, man, that, yeah. that stuff. So it's, it's, it's haunting. It's like that. I should do a cave painting. That's pretty dude. Sweet. Yeah. I mean, it, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Um, I, I, I gotta see that documentary again. It was so good. Uh, did you see, there was like, I remember the one thing that blew me away was they're talking about this one wall Um. And, the, and the, the, there was like antelope and buffalo and, and, and they're all running and there's like this movement and just it was just unreal yeah. <laughs> that it was that long ago. Then there was a, a, a section next to it that they said, you can tell that the art, it's two different artists and the artist on this side is emulating this artist. Like he's learning from this artist and yeah. trying to to learn how to draw from him. You can see, and he's doing a great job, but you can tell that he's borrowing and learning from this other artist. Sure. And that was really cool. Yeah, Master Apprentice, that's cool. Yeah, and then and they go, do you want to know the time difference between this art, the, who did this art, artist did, and this section? 5,000 years difference between that's the so two. Cool, man. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> 5,000. So cool. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, that I just was like, I need to go get another bottle of wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, I wanted to ask you about your, so you got this oil portrait you've been doing on the copper. Yeah. Yeah. And it's freaking insane. And you, you, um, it's, it's, it's based off of the, the graphite drawing, right? Yeah. You, you did one from life and that's, that's an amazing drawing. Um, yeah. Thanks. And you did it from looking in a mirror, right? You're just, yeah. I got the mirror set up. I did yeah. a drawing first and then, yeah, kind of still, I'm still kind of messing around with the painting. Yeah. But, um, that's awesome, man. I mean, the, the, the drawing itself is just, um, just masterful, dude. It was, it's so good. Um, and, and that's the thing too, is the one thing I really respect about your technique, um, when you're, even when you're just doing that kind of stuff, um, I know it's boring for you cause it's, it's not like a piece of wood. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, but like you're, you're, you're so like, uh, patient with it. And it's very intricate. It's, it's, mm-hmm. You know, you're, you 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 take your your time, like you you know, you can see yeah. like the gradual build up, and you really care about it, and it's really kind of cool to see it develop, um, in that way. And then there's something that's interesting about like the graphite drawing to me, is even though, like I think I think sometimes graphite drawings can, when they get really really tight like that, they can feel st- like stagnant. Yeah, definitely. And, and uh, there, yours doesn't feel that way. It has a, a really nice, and I think a lot of it has to do with the way you handled your edges and, and things like that. But there's like well, a, like you a know, moment. that's what drawing from life is so important. I think too is yeah. that he doesn't have that photographic distortion that a lot of artists will get when they use photos. You know, you have because obviously your eye can refocus on an area. Yeah, uh, and then you have that di- that different edge quality. 
and yeah, it makes, it makes a huge difference, but it's, again, it's difficult, you know, cause it's in a mirror, right. And you're moving around and yeah. the lighting changes and it's just a pain in the ass, like, you know, in every way, but uh, yeah, but there's more, it has, I don't know. You're right though. It's not, it's not as stiff and it just has that fullness to it. The sort of roundness within the value. Yeah. It's really nice. Now, when you, when you're doing the oil painting, are you, are you, you're still painting looking in a mirror, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, that I, I wanted to talk um, about that process because, you know, do you, you're still, you're painting on the copper. Are you, when I look at that painting, one of the things I love about it is when, when I, when you show the close-ups of it, it looks very much like a Rembrandt, like it's the, super textured. Yeah. Like that um, just yeah. the technique, it has that almost Dutch Flemish feeling to it. And I was just wondering yeah. if that's kind of the yeah. approach that you took with yeah. it. Yeah, I'm using exactly a, a, a Flemish technique, yeah. And and that's, I started, you know, I'm doing another painting, another wood thing, and I, I kind of have a new idea about how to achieve texture. Um, and I was looking at Rembrandt paintings, so I figured I'm gonna just try the texture process out in a, in a, at a portrait, you know, see how it goes. Um, so yeah, I don't, it's, it's interesting that I don't really care so much about, I guess the drawing of the painting, but I'm, I'm really, I'm really focused on the surface of that, of that portrait. Um, yeah. And I was experimenting completely with, with it, with just a, a kind of a new way. Of well, what's it. interesting, what I'm curious about is because, you know, like, like with Rembrandt, he's doing it on like linen or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're doing like the raw umber. Um, underpainting and keeping the shadows real nice and thin and then when he comes in with the light you know he builds up the layers of that like that lead white or whatever it is like just thick 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 um and then then there's the color process after and you, you the, the technique basically was to keep the shadows very thin yes exactly back. and but how now when you're doing that on copper yeah it's really it's really tricky on copper because it's reflective. yeah that's that's why i'm I, i'm looking at that i'm like i don't i'm dead yeah dead it, sort of had, it had to sort of um the first layer or so was painted essentially directly like how you would do sort of an olive prima painting just to get kind of an understanding but keeping the shadows uh as, as thin and smooth as possible um but then after that i was using like a um hmm. i think it's essentially it's essentially calcite or or maybe chalk ground up in um in like a stand oil. So it's like a paste medium, but it's, it's, um, it was sort of commonly used, you know, sort of back in the day. It's really thick and, and, and long. like a pumice kind of. Yeah. Imagine like a pumice mixed with oil. Right. So, yeah. um, okay. so it's like a, a relatively transparent kind of chalky white, you know, milky white uh, color, but mm. it has this consistency of, um, like mm. imagine like honey or, or, um, you know, serve. It's really long. So when you pull a, a mark, like it, it's stringy, you know, oh, like okay. gum or something. It's really interesting. And I'm building up the texture in the light area, almost like sculpting the shape of the, the you know, the skin uh, and not, not too much concern about color, more so about value and texture. And then what mm -hmm. I'm doing is um, keeping it sort of high key and then I'm glazing into the surface later. So after, after it's completely dried, I'll take a, um, a paint and not not like a soupy glaze i think people think of glazing as like a soupy wash that they just sort of put all over the place yeah but this is done with um like a stiff paint and a, and a bristle brush and um i'm sort of scrubbing the paint in, you know into the surface and then and then wiping away the paint so what happens is that that color sits in the low points of the texture so then it kind of pulls out the pores of the skin and and uh whatever i did with the texture kind of you know it it sort of makes it more um uh, more visible i guess you can say but it but it's it's tricky to handle, but I'm, I want to use this technique for future paintings. So I'm, I've been playing around with the portrait quite, quite a bit. Yeah. That's, I want, I want to see that, that one up close too. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty interesting. Are you planning on leaving the copper around it? Yeah. Well? Yeah. Totally, yeah. It's, yeah, it was just scratching, you know, it was really fun. There were some highlights in the hair and highlights in the beard. I was scratching, uh, with a, with some, with a gold point through the paint to reveal the exposed copper. To just in, in little spots so you can get that high, the highlight you know once it moves around the only issue with the copper in this in this particular portrait is that it needs mm. to be lit well i think because it's reflective so it looks so much better in like in like a, a you know a well-lit area uh, because it's reflective That's yeah i'm gonna leave i'm gonna leave the copper yeah yeah it's, it's a really interesting look it's pretty cool man yeah thanks that's awesome dude you should try yeah. it out yeah i mean there's a lot of things i want to try out yeah yeah <laughs> um but uh, yeah, it's it's that's really cool, man. 
that that piece is just awesome i love i just love the, the look of it the it's just got such a nice um like i mean i've only seen like basically instagram pictures of it but there's like yeah, a, yeah. a nice depth to it that's just really cool you yeah know? i'll post a better picture of it i got it right here grab it uh, i don't know if you'll be able to see it in here but i don't know if i can't get the right lighting yeah. or whatever but yeah i kind of scratched out the you know where the uh that's so cool, man. Body's no good, whatever. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Man. Thanks, man. It, it's getting there. Yeah, and it's cool. I mean, again, like I've never really seen a painting like that before, like with the copper showing. Like it's pretty awesome. Yeah, and copper, you know, they used to use copper. Um, it was a common material back in the day. Um, and it's it's super um I think it's fantastic to paint on. It's like the best, probably the best thing you could paint on with oil paint. Hmm. Uh, but no one seems to use it. It's expensive, I guess. Yeah. But um yeah, I'd like to try some ideal, It's like the ideal surface to paint on. And especially if you're concerned about like uh, you're painting living or lasting, you know, a thousand years or whatever, I paint on copper. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Um, well, hey, before uh, w- before we end this uh, this convo, um, I want to I, I wanna make sure I show you some fan art. So Yeah, yeah, sure, man. Um, so it's, it's always kind of fun to see what people have done. So um, – yeah. let's uh i'm gonna share with you real quick let me know if you see this do you see it yeah yeah, yeah. i see it. this is awesome okay cool <laughs> <laughs> who, did, who did this this is uh by uh jacques lamonnier oh this is great yeah yeah i like i like his pencil work a lot he's got really nice uh cross hatching and stuff yeah but uh, well, uh <laughs> yeah the great yeah this is good really good it's really funny uh you know <laughs> awesome man. yeah so cool yeah it's, it's um there's something this it kind of reminds me a little bit of a mort drucker a little bit yeah 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 hell yeah there you go <laughs> one of your one of your screws in your head uh this is by dominic zeilinger yeah, yeah perfect <laughs> yeah i got the bolt right to the head I like yeah. the stubble it's nice <laughs> It's one of the first things I noticed when uh, when you popped on the screen. I was like, that is yeah. some nice five o'clock shadow going on there. Yeah. And they got the widow's peak, man. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. There you go. This is by uh, Christine uh, oh, Varadi. Look at that, man. That's yeah, nice. Yeah. She made like an actual painting, huh? I mean, like, you know, she spent time on this. It's cool. Oh, yeah. I think oh, great. I'm not 100%, but. I think this might be an iPad painting or yeah, I'm not sure, but yeah, it's really nice. I love, yeah, I love the, uh, too, yeah. like the red kind of underpainting popping through is pretty yeah, awesome. Sure. That's a fun, that's a fun technique, you know, starting with a, a sort of a deep red and yeah. kind of going on top with monochromatic. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. I love that, man. Oh, these are awesome. You'll have to send me these. Yeah. I'll email them to you. <laughs> um, uh, this is by, uh, Graziano De Carlo. Oh, that's great, man. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I just noticed something so uh, funny. Graziano. I normally don't do this, but you've sent in a few uh paintings and uh, I think your stuff's really cool. It's really awesome. Uh I like the the detail and the textures. One thing I just noticed though, and I can't help it, I do a lot of critiques for students, but um, I always feel bad saying stuff on here because you didn't really ask for a critique, but it's my podcast, so I'm going to do it. Do whatever you want. I, I yeah. just, I, the like the the whole image looks great. I think you did a great job. But the one thing that's distracting me is the shoulders and the edges of the shirt are really harsh. And so if you just soften those those harsh lines, it would, like kind of like how you did the ear out of focus a little bit. Um. I think if you did that with the, the shirt, not necessarily out of focus, just soften it. Um, that's just my two cents. But I think the thing it looks awesome though. Yeah. Now, are you teaching, Jason? Are you teaching um, digital classes and so on? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've been teaching for since like 2006. Yeah, nice man. Um, for schoolism, I do two classes. Yeah, that's right. School. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is a uh, from Walid uh, Shihab. <laughs> uh, that's cool. <laughs> I don't know. This one reminds me of uh, Fred yeah. Flintstone a little bit. Or... Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, yeah. Nice one, Wally. Great man. These are all great. Yeah. Um, this one 
absolutely cracks me up. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all the things going on in this one, man. <laughs> yeah. Rock and roll, man. You got the alien with the with flying V. Yeah. Um, yeah. He thought that you looked like Paul Giamatti. <laughs> so he put that on. <laughs> Which I guess I can kind of see right. that a little right. bit. Maybe the eyes. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. That's kind of funny. Uh, yeah. I need a bandana like that, man. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Oh, man. Uh, Juan cracks me up. He's a funny dude. Yeah, man. this is great. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Oh man. Um, now is here like in between your legs? Is that supposed to be butt cheeks hanging down or <laughs> a ball sack? Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is, but getting chubby in that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the last one. <laughs> that's the last one. Um. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you everybody for sharing those. It's always fun. So cool. Yeah. Please send me those, man. Those are and yeah, thanks to all those artists that did that. That was so cool. Yeah. yeah it's it's you fun, guys man. Awesome. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, before we get out of here, first of all, thanks for joining me for this, man. This is really fun to, to talk. I'm um uh like I said, it's, it's it's I've been a fan of your work as well. And so um it's really cool to, to have you on here and and just um talk shop and shit about art and whatever else. Yeah, yeah. Um but uh, what do you have anything like happening going on soon? Or I mean, it's it's a really weird time, obviously. Yeah, you know, all but... the shows I had st- were kind of either pushed back or canceled. Um, so not not really. I'm kind of waiting. Um, like in New York, I've been doing a show probably every year or so, and then it's sort of random in in Chicago. But but I'll let you know when I have something coming up soon. Um, I'm sort of rescheduling stuff right now. Awesome. Yeah. And you're just keeping busy and yeah, I mean, I'm starting up teaching on Monday at Harper college. So that starts soon. So I got to focus on that, you know, I'll get everything ready for that. And what kind of stuff are you teaching? It's like a dr- advanced drawing class. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah. It's a, a introduction to color theory. So, That's awesome. Yeah. It should be fun. That's cool, man. Yeah. Well, awesome, man. Thank you so much again uh, for joining me for this. And um, for everyone watching, uh, thank you for supporting. Next week, Sam Viviano, longtime art director for Mad Magazine, will be the guest. Um, uh, Jim Lee, who's an insanely amazing, probably one of the best DC Comics artists out there, he's going to be coming up soon as well. I can't wait to talk with him. Huge fan of his work. But uh, cool things are gonna are keeping keeping on happening with the podcast. I'm gonna keep doing what I can uh, because Papa loves you. I love you, everybody. (laughs) Daddy loves you. Uh, But anyways, thank you, everybody, so much for the support. And uh, thank you, Anthony. You're awesome. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Jason. No problem. Thanks, man. You want answers? truth.